Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Weirich, and I want to thank you so much. Oh, it's so nice to see smiley faces. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon and with Michaels and Derwent. So I'm going to be teaching you a painting today. And um, if you want to in the chat, say where you're tuning in from. It's such a hot day here in Maine. I imagine it's even hotter in the rest of the United States. And um, I have no idea what the weather is in the other parts of the world. But um, let us know where you're coming from. Oh, we've got Canada and Florida, Denver. Oh my goodness, Dover. Holy moly, it is going fast. I'm not going to be able to keep up with all that. But I've got great news because Molly from Derwent is actually going to be monitoring the chat. And if you guys have questions for me as we go along, you can type them in the chat. Now we got a lot of people here. So um, just to make it easier for Molly to see the questions, if you type the word question in alt caps, um, and then just type your question in normal upper lowercase, that will help her see um, what the questions are so she can uh, help pick them out. Now she is a product expert as well, so she can answer probably a lot of the questions that come through, um, but she will also relay some to me when I take questions. That way, um, that way I can make sure if anybody is um, missing something or if I didn't explain anything clearly that I clarify that in the video. Now this will be recorded. So if you want to just chill out and, you know, have a cup of tea or coffee or maybe something cooler today and chat with your crafty friends in the side in the, the sidebar chat um, or just kind of relax and watch the project through, uh, you'll be able to tackle it later because the the uh, stream is being recorded and it will be up at michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. Uh, okay, I just saw a, a notification came on the screen. That's why Molly is going to be moderating this because I get too distracted with all the notifications. Um, and let's see. Oh, and when you create your beautiful works of art, we obviously want to see them. So you can share them on social media by using the hashtag make it with Michaels or hashtag Michaels classes and hashtag the frugal crafter. So I'll see it too. Um, Cause it's so fun to see what everybody makes with our, uh, with our classes here. And um, I guess without further ado, we can change cameras to the table and we'll get going. So I hope you're all excited and ready to play along. I can't believe how many of you guys are here. This is so exciting. What a great way to spend a hot afternoon to spend it in my cool basement painting with you guys. All right, so everything worked perfectly in the test. So I'm just hoping that everything still works perfectly. All right. Okay, hopefully, if you can let me know in the chat if you can see my painting and my um, my palette here, we're going to be working with some Derwent Ink Tense products, and um, you can please follow along with whatever you have at home. But as we're going along, if I see something that's kind of um, a little different to work with intense or how it would be different with watercolor, I'll mention it so that way you can have the most success when you're using your products. Now I chose uh, five pencils that were available in the 12 count tin from um, Derwent Ink Tense. So that way pretty much whatever size tin you have, you're going to have the pencils you need. I wanted to make it um, very easy for anybody that has these products already to follow along with. And we're going to use the ink tents pan paints. So if you don't have the pan paints, feel free to grab your watercolors and um, and play along with those. So this is a finished product. I'm going to set that aside so you can see my watercolor paper. I have my pattern already on my paper. The pattern is available for free um, on michaels.com slash classes. If you go to uh, the link where you signed up for class, you can just print it out and you can uh, transfer it onto your paper. I am using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor Paper and this is what the label looks like if you're curious. It comes in a bag and it's already chopped down. It's 100% cotton and it's very affordable. So you get cotton paper at um, kind of cellulose paper prices, but you can of course use whatever paper you prefer. We're gonna start by loosening up and we're gonna take a big brush and you can use whatever big brush you have. This is a Princeton Neptune quill. And um, I like it because it holds a lot of water. And what you're going to do, because we're just going to, we're going to shake the rust off. Maybe you haven't painted in a while. We're just going to flick on some water. We're just going to kind of tap some on here. We're going to make an interesting background and we're not going to have a care in the world. We're just going to dab on 
our color. Let's see. Oh, someone said, can you use mixed media paper? You know, you can. You might want to tape it down, though, because it's usually a little bit thinner and it will tend to warp a little bit. Since we're not doing a lot of lifting, it should be fine, though. So if you want to gussy up that art journal and plan your art journal, that's going to be just fine. All right. Now we're going to put in some beautiful background colors. And uh, one thing I want to mention about the Inktense pan paints, because they're they're fairly new product to the Inktense line. And uh, obviously, if Molly wants to add anything to what I'm saying, please feel free. Um, is that they chose colors in the Inktense pan paints. Some of them are unique to the Inktense range. And I'm using a fuchsia here. They chose colors that are more light fast. So if you have the 772 Inktense, some of those colors may fade over time. So I love how they chose the pan paints to be a little bit more light fast. So I got some pinks in here. I'm also going to grab some turquoise. And I'm just going to double check my what I'm calling these colors, make sure I'm color. Yeah, I'm, call, I'm calling them the Derwent names because sometimes um, I'll just go by what it looks like versus what the actual color is. I want to actually paint some of this in specific areas. So I'm just going to go around my orchid here with the turquoise. Now, here's a little trick. Sometimes we want to get that loosey juicy uh, splashy look, but we're kind of afraid of our paint going where we don't want it. So this is a little trick I'm going to show you. Now watercolor is absolutely the most lazy medium there is. I think that's why I like it. So if I want my water, to, my paint to go somewhere and I want to kind of control it, but still have it look kind of loose, I'll just wet the area and that paint's just going to flow right out to wherever I wet the paper because it's going to follow the path of least resistance. So all I got to do is just what the area I want the paint to travel and it's going to flow. So same thing over here. Let's say I want a little bit of green underneath here, but I don't want it to go into what I've already my focal point too much. So I'm just going to kind of paint this area with clear water. Oh, by the way, guys, I have two pots of water here. And the reason I have two pots of water, I take the bigger one and I clean my brush with it every time. And then I take the smaller one, which is just a little olive jar because it's not so tippy. And then I use that for getting fresh water so that I don't have muddy mixes. And now I'm going to grab, let's see what color would be pretty. I like to swatch my colors on watercolor paper. That way I know exactly what I'm going to get. I think I'm going to grab some of this pretty, I think this is called kiwi. Yes, it's called kiwi. And I'm just going to add that in there and let it flow. Just let it do its thing here. And I'm going to flick some of that in there too. Now we're working with pretty bright colors and they, since they're very transparent, they don't get muddy, which is really nice. You have to really work to make these muddy. And if you get color where you don't want it, all you do is you dry your brush off really good and you make it thirsty. And then it's just gonna absorb whatever, um, whatever is on the paper. Now you gotta do that before the paint dries because once it dries, it's going to be permanent. And that's one of the things I love about Intense is that it becomes permanent once you have, um, once it has been wet and it's soaked into the paper. And you can use it on fabric too. So if you've got some plain old white face masks that you're still wearing, because you know you still gotta wear them in a lot of stores and stuff, even if you're fully vaccinated, you can decorate those masks. I have a project on my Instagram and on my blog on um, on painting some masks with ink tents. So it's a lot of fun and it just gives them a little personality, I think. Molly, did we have any questions yet? I haven't been keeping up with the chat. Yeah, there were two questions. Um, someone wanted to know what colors you were using, which I think you you did share that. So you may just have to watch the recording. And then the other question was, someone wanted to know why you were using that big of a brush. Um, well, I'm in the kind of uh, loosey juicy phase of the painting. So I'm using this big brush so that I don't get too fussy. And it carries a lot of water. So I know that um, my paint will be a little muted in these background areas. And um, I like to work with the biggest brush that I can hold or that will work because it makes you a better painter. When you have to, when you have to maneuver a big brush, you are forced to use proper technique, like holding the brushes at a 90 degree angle with your paper when you want fine details, or um, using a fat side stroke when you want bold details. It saves a lot of time and it gives you beautiful results. Now, the colors I've been using have been kiwi, turquoise, fuchsia, and um, I think that's it so far. And I did list the pencil names that, um, that I used in the, the class description. So if you need those exact pencil names, you can go ahead and, uh, and use them. 
I think I, and I made that green by taking turquoise and the kiwi. And the reason I'm mixing this green instead of going with one of the other beautiful greens in the set is because if I mix my green, I'm going to have harmony. If I use just another color that I might not use again, it might be discordant and it just won't look as professional. So that's another little uh, another little tip and trick for you. Now I'm just trying to figure out, I think I want maybe a little yellow in here too. And I'm going to use sun yellow. And I'm just gonna flick some on there. So I will warn you, if you do all this flicking, you're gonna to have to wipe down your table after you're done painting. Now, if you have speckles where you don't want them, you can soften that up just by going in with a wet brush and kind of moving your paint around. These colors are nice and muted over here, so I don't have to worry about them overpowering my my um, my little buds there. I am going to blot a little bit off of this guy here before it dries, just to make sure it's light enough. And this is Jesus looking a little too dark to me, so I'm just going to lift that up a little bit. Now you might be thinking, Jesus Lindsay, I have the whole set of Intense pencils. I don't know if I want to buy those paints. Can I, can I use the pencils? And absolutely, you sure can. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One way is to take your pencil, and it can be a little tough on a slick surface like this, but you can just scribble your pencil on your palette. And this color here is apple green. It's a beautiful, clean green. It's very similar to the May green. And then you can pick that up with your brush, and you can dab it on just like that. Now, another way I like to do, but I only do this if I'm not gonna be drawing with a pencil right away or sharpening it right away, is I will actually just take my brush and I will use that lead because the Derwent pencil ones are very thick. I will just use that lead just like it was a pan of paint. And then I'll just look at that. Look, it's so rich and bright. And I will use it like that. Now, the only um, thing I wanna warn you about this is that you don't wanna sharpen it after you do this because you are gonna weaken that lead just a little bit until it dries back out again. So um, just do that with caution, but it is such a nice way to get beautiful color right off of those pencils. And so if you're trying to decide like what, what would be the most beneficial product to start with, I would probably say the pencils because they're so versatile and they have so much pigment in, in them. Um, obviously, you know, you know what you would use best, but you can do a lot with those pencils. Now I feel like I want a little bit more turquoise here and then we're gonna be done with our background. So I'm just flicking in a little bit more there. Don't worry if you get some areas that are a little gray because we're gonna have such a bright flower here that it's just gonna, it's just gonna um, support it. It's gonna make it look real nice. It's not gonna overpower it. And maybe a little bit more fuchsia because I like, I like the pink. And I think I went over the colors that we used again, but they will, uh, as, as uh, Molly mentioned, they will be in the replay. All right, I'm happy with that background. Hopefully the colors show up as bright as, um, as they look here, I'm just gonna bring over my finished artwork because sometimes the glare can make the, the colors not show. I also have a post, uh, this posted on my Instagram and it's also on the Michaels uh, class page. So you can see that if you need to get a better look. Sometimes webcams just kind of mute stuff. Now, while we're at it, what we're gonna do is we are gonna grab some of that, uh, that sun yellow. But first what we're gonna do is wet our flower with our clean water. We are going to wet, not quite to the edges. So I'm wetting the flower, but I'm gonna leave a gap. And don't worry that your paper is wet. It's gonna be fine because we're not, um, if it, even if it bleeds out a little bit, it's just gonna to add to the, um, the artsiness of it all. You don't want it like too puddly, so I'm actually gonna sop up a little bit of that. Then we're gonna take our sun yellow. I'm gonna clean off a spot here. And we're gonna add that on our palette because we need to mute it down a little bit. It's kind of bright, so we wanna make sure we don't have too much on our brush. And then we are just gonna go in and do a nice wash of that sun yellow on our paper. Now here's where you're gonna see the beauty of ink tents. So we have wet this paper with our brush and with some really pale color. You don't need to get the middle because we're gonna be doing that a different color. If you do get it, it's not a big deal. Now I'm gonna take my sun yellow without adding any more water to my brush. I'm just picking that up now. 
can you see, I think you can see that on the tip of my brush, I see how much paint I have there. You can actually see how yellow it is. So that's pretty bold. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to the outsides of the petals. And it's not gonna flow so much because we don't have as much water on our brush now because I didn't redip it in the water. So I'm just gonna give that nice kind of a rouge of yellow towards the outsides of my petals. You can scooch it up pretty close to the edge. And don't worry, if it starts flowing out like that, that's fine. All right. And then what we're going to do is really fun. We are going to take a nice, sharp um, fuchsia pencil, same colors we used in our background from the pans, and we are going to add some details. And this is so fun, but it can be a little scary. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to draw the lines right on our wet paper. Now you're using very little pressure. You are barely touching that pencil. And look at that crisp line. You got to make sure that your pencil is sharp, but it's going to wear so slowly. You get so much color just from the touch of the pencil that um, you'll be able to do probably the whole flower without having to resharpen. Then we're going to add these little veins off of each of those lines that we put down. Now the beauty of, of attending the live class and watching it through and then watching the replay later is that you can pause if you need to, you can take a break if you need to, and um, you can come back to it. Now, let's say you're doing this, this flower here and your flower dries on you and you're not getting that nice, bold, bright color again. What you can do, because the ink tense is permanent, and this is something that's different than watercolor, is that once that dries, that paint isn't going anywhere. So you could actually come back tomorrow and you could just wet that petal with clear water and you could do the technique I'm doing right here. So if you had watercolor and you re-wet over the, uh, that petal, you might lift up that yellow. Now it wouldn't be the end of the world. So don't, don't make that, don't let that like stop you if you're using watercolors, but it's just one of the, um, one of the neat things that ink tents can do. You don't have to worry about muddying, you know, getting orange lines because you've, you know, kicked up all that yellow and it's mixed in with your, with your colors, it's it just gives you a lot of a lot of versatility. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. And while I'm doing this, if Molly has any more questions for me, she can shoot them uh, or she can ask me verbally, and I will answer while we're doing this because we keep doing this for all these petals. It's very repetitive. Let's see. Here. I'm just waiting to see if any more questions come through. I think we've answered a lot of them. So Lindsay, you're using the magenta ink tense pencil. Do you know um, any other colors you might be using so people could go ahead and pull them out? Sure, this is actually fuchsia, but magenta. Oh, it is fuchsia, sorry. <laughs> yep, I am using sun yellow, poppy red, um, leaf green, and apple green. And those are, I believe those are listed in the class description as well. So um, that can be uh, referenced again after the live stream. And that will probably be in the video description. I do believe uh, that Felicia from Michaels is going to be adding all that information in. You don't have to be too fussy with this, but you can also take more time if you want to. We're gonna be adding some more color over this layer. So don't worry if you feel like it looks a little too stark. That's just because we haven't added our shading layer. We're just doing our, our veining layer right now. And we still don't have to sharpen that pencil, which is really nice. Lindsay, someone is asking just about the difference between the ink tents and watercolor. And I think that's just kind of a, a common question we get. Do you sure. want to speak to it from an artist's perspective? Absolutely. Um, I enjoy both ink tents and watercolor pencils. If you think of your set of watercolor pencils and you say you've swatched them all out, and you're looking at them, um, the ink, and then you swatched out the ink tents, the ink tents would be, I would say like a, like a step darker, a step more saturated and a step more kind of robust in color. They tend to wear down less because you get so much from such a light little stroke of color. And the biggest difference though, is the fact that you can use them on fabric. They are permanent on fabric. And once you have put them on paper and activated them, 
they will not reactivate. So like these lines here where I'm using them dry on wet paper, they might move a little bit when I go to put our shading layer, but we're gonna be doing more fuchsia, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but if you were doing this with watercolor pencil, it might lift a little bit more, but you certainly could do that. Um, what, I th what I think is the big difference is the fact that they are uh, color fast. Now, color fast and light fast are two different things. So I do want to clarify there. When I say color fast, I mean, if you use this on fabric, it's not going to wash away. Um, what I do if I'm using fabric is I pre-wash it and cotton works best. And then I will, um, and then I will actually work on damp fabric if I can, because it just helps the colors, the colors hold. I also like the intense blocks a lot on the fabric because they have so they're just a stick of pigment. You don't even have to, you know, sharpen them or anything. Um, but color fast just basically means it's not going to wash away. It's going to be permanent, kind of like um, like a Sharpie permanent marker. Now, a Sharpie marker will fade when exposed to sun if you've like drawn something with a sharp, Sharpie marker. But if you draw like on your T-shirt with a Sharpie marker, it's not going to wash out. So these are color fast. The pan paints are more light fast if you are um, interested in those properties of the intense pencils, but you wanna be a little more certain that you're getting a light fast color uh, rather than weeding through and picking out colors that might fade, like you know, pinks and purples are kind of um, known for being a little finicky. Um, you might wanna go with the paints, but that's that's the big difference. If Even if you're not interested in the color fast properties, you might want to, um, you know, grab a few intense colors. Maybe you're thinking when you're looking at your watercolor paints that, oh, they're just not quite bright enough in this, this, and this color. You could just grab a few open stock ink tents to kind of boost up your watercolor pencil so you have the color you need. What I did there was I just wet an area because I could feel that my, my, uh, my paper was drying and I wasn't getting the amount of color I wanted. So I'm dampening that. So when I go back in, I'm going to get those nice, nice bright lines. I should have grabbed my um, my watercolor and ink tent swatches so I could have held them up side by side. I, I do have a um, I do have one of my ink tent swatches here that I did. I think I made it about I don't know eight years ago or something, and it's still bright as a day, bright as can be. But it's been in a binder. Um, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a number eight round, and the brushes I'm using are Princeton Neptune. They are a synthetic brush that mimics a squirrel. So they, they hold a lot of water and paint like a natural hair brush will, but they're less expensive because they're made with synthetic fibers and they're animal friendly because they're not made with fur. If you want a more budget version of a synthetic squirrel, you could try the Royal and Lanical Menta brushes. The Menta watercolor liner also a, um, a faux squirrel and they hold lots of water and paint and they're very good. Um, there's also the Menta All Media line that is synthetic. So if you want something with a little more push, a little firmer of a brush, you can, um, you can choose those as well. So now I'm gonna grab some of the Fuchsia pan paint here. And again, I notice how I don't just take it right from the pan. I'm working it off in my palette a bit because I wanna make sure I don't have any really strong um, bits of pigment in there. And then I'm gonna go to this first petal that I painted. I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of turquoise in there too make a little bit of a purple. And I'm gonna add that right in here at the edge, kind of where, next to where the petals next to it are overlapping. Now my, my paper's, this petal's pretty dry right now, so I'm not getting fuzzy edges, but if this was really wet, I would wanna be careful not to, um, not to get real fuzzy edges. Then before that dries, so this isn't where you wanna take a break, or you're gonna be very sorry when you come back. Before that dries, you're gonna pick up just the fuchsia. Now, I don't know if you saw what I did there. I didn't even uh, think to mention it. I rinsed my brush and then I squeezed it to get the extra water out. And that just gives me about the perfect amount of water in here for this technique. I'm going right up to the edge of that purple color I mixed and I'm blending out the fuchsia. I'm rinsing my brush. I'm going to blot it off and I'm going to go right along that edge. Now look at how our beautiful lines are not running and making a mess. That's because it's ink tense. Now, if you're going over watercolor pencil, you might get a little movement. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world, but just to let you know. At this point, if you want the colors brighter, you can either let it dry and go over with another layer, or you can go right in while it's wet. It's completely up to you. Um, I think that, I think I want it a little bit darker, to be honest. So let's mix up a little bit more of our purple, turquoise and, uh, and fuchsia. 
and we're mixing so that we don't, um, so we keep harmony. But if you wanted to use a, uh, you know, a premixed purple, you certainly could. It's just going to be a different sort of look. You get a more natural look if you use fewer colors and you mix them, which is great for our pocketbooks because you can buy fewer colors and actually end up with a better looking painting when you're done. So I'm going to clean, I'm going to squeeze, actually get the clean water, I'm going to squeeze and pick up my fuchsia, work it out, make sure I don't have any clumps, which I haven't had that issue, but it's always best practice, I think. And I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more there. I like that saturation a little bit better. Sometimes we get a little shy when we're painting that first petal and we don't wanna, we don't wanna go too crazy. Now I'm also thinking, boy, I'd like a little more yellow in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead, grab some of that sun yellow, and I'm just gonna Add it up here and blend it to the fuchsia. I don't want to blend it into the purple though because yellow and purple are opposites and they make mud. All right, so we're going to be repeating that on these bottom two petals here. So rule of thumb with this project, the underlapping petals, the petals underneath are going to have the purple and the other two are going to have um, just the fuchsia. So because I've done this before, I'm going to end we're um, we're going to try to keep this to around an hour. I'm going to do both of those at the same time, but please do one at a time if you're feeling that you might not be able to keep up with that. So I'm going to load my brush up with plenty of that purple. I'm going to go right in here, right up next to those petals that are on top. So I would say if you're working on a petal, if you're doing a technique on a petal, take a break after you're done that petal. Don't take a break mid petal because um, it can be very difficult to get things to blend together and integrate once you've, um, once you've stopped. So get my shadow in there. And by having this cool shadow, cool colors, no, because we added blue to that fuchsia, I made it cool. Cool colors retreat and warm colors advance. So if we have these petals warmer, like more yellow, more fuchsia, they're going to come towards us. Those two are going to fall back and it's just going to give us a little more depth. It's going to be real pretty. Going in with the fuchsia, I am kind of overlapping my purple there. I'm gonna do it on both. Feel free to use that pause button on the recording so you don't have to feel rushed because art should be fun. You shouldn't feel rushed. In the brush, we're gonna blot it and then we're gonna blend the color out so we have a nice soft look there. I'm gonna blend those two colors together a little bit more too because I think it looks a little harsh. Now, if you're like, um, once you, you do this, if you think that maybe your intense wasn't dark enough, you can go over it, you can do it again. You could even use a small brush and go in there if you didn't like doing it with a pencil. If the pencil felt too grainy for you, you can do that. Or if you don't have the pencils, you can do that. The best way to avoid mud is cleaning that brush frequently. In while it's wet, you can lift up some color. So if it feels a little too dark, you can go in and lift it up. Now I think maybe a little bit more uh, in the veining in here. So I'm just gonna go in and add a hey, little Lindsay, bit. Hey Lindsay, can you yeah. just repeat what you said about warm and cool colors? Sure, uh, cool colors retreat, which means they things that are painted with cool colors seem to be further away. If you look out your window and you see faraway mountains, they're gonna be kind of like a purpley bluish gray. And then um, if you were actually up close on that mountain, you would see all the greens and yellows and golds and all those colors that comprise the trees and the mountain. But since it's far away, everything looks cooler, the way the light scatters. Um, but things that are closer to you, warmer colors appear to come, come forward or advance towards you. So by having your cool your shadows a little bit cooler in temperature, they're gonna give you more depth to your picture. I hope that makes sense. And for these two petals, we're just gonna use the fuchsia. And I'm not gonna go right up to the edge because I want that warm color. Also, opposites make the opposite color stronger. So if I have yellow next to purple, it makes both of those colors seem more vibrant. But if I mix them, they make mud. So it's kind of a fun thing about complementary colors. I do the same thing over here. This is just the fuchsia. And again, you can pick up the paint from the stick of your pencil. Just make sure you don't go back in. Don't, don't sharpen it right after you do that because that will weaken the lead. Now, Molly, I got a question for you because I've heard so many mixed things about um, 
about this technique. And I've done it and never had a problem, but what is, uh, what is your take on dipping a water soluble pencil in the water and using it on paper mm -hmm. like that? I don't recommend it because it will, I find it crumbles and it just kind of weakens the core. So I generally don't recommend it personally, but you know, I mean, I think the great thing about art and supplies is that you can have the liberty to kind of see what works for you. I mean, people do all different kinds of things with the ink tents blocks. I know I personally like using a lemon zester and grating them and kind of making my own splatter, but I like to create really messy artwork. And so there's no right or wrong answer, I don't think. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. Now these little buds here are there, you're seeing them from the side. They're not uh, the star of the show. So we can actually be really fun and loose with them. And uh, I'm gonna just grab some of the, we're gonna start off with some of that sun yellow. That's such a pretty color. It's so nice and clean. Now, oh, I, I wanna show you this swatch here. When you're looking at colors and you want to make sure they're not gonna make mud, you wanna go for more transparent colors and colors that are, have cool undertones. So, um, these colors are so vibrant and clean that I'm not too worried about it. But like if say I had like the choice between the sun yellow and the um, sherbet lemon, sherbet lemon would probably be less likely to make mud because it has a cooler undertone. It looks a little more like green than it does this. This looks a little bit closer to orange. So that's uh, just a little tip. If you find that your work gets muddy, look for cooler undertones and um, you'll get better. You'll get better results. Also make a swatch with a black line on your paper first, like use a Sharpie, make some lines and swatch over it. And then you can tell what's what's transparent and what's opaque. And if you choose more transparent colors for your mixing, it's less likely to go muddy. But hey, rules are meant to be broken. I just wanted to give that tip for anybody that might be struggling with that, especially with watercolor, it makes a big difference. So for this, I'm just gonna do very quick and uh, loose strokes to fill in these little buds, these little kind of side view buds. I'm gonna add a little bit. I'm gonna actually use apple green right from the pencil because I love that color. And I had yellow on my pencil, on my brush, so I didn't bother rinsing it because yellow is an ingredient in green, so I'm not worried about that. Now, where I need to be a little bit careful is when I put the pink on because I don't want the, um, I don't want that, that green and pink to mix too much because that's going to make mud because green and red are opposites. That pink is real close to red. So I just want to make sure that I'm not going to get mud. So I'm just going to, I can overlap my yellow, but I don't want to overlap the green too much. And this is not, this is not fussy. It's not scientific. Just, you know, put the colors down, have a good time. Now something else I want to get, I'm just going to soften that a little bit because it's a little rough. It's a little, a little choppy. Get a little bit more yellow maybe. Now I want to introduce a new color because I know I'm going to use some of this poppy red in the center of this flower. And if we're looking at this flower sideways, we're going to see, we'll see a little bit of that red on this little kind of like, um, almost this looks like a tongue sticking out. We're going to see some of that red. So I want to get some of that color in there. Um, I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to, and I'll do this over the palette just in case it spatters because I don't have any of this color spattered in the background. I'm going to pick up some of that color and I'm just going to touch a little bit of that into that and just let it kind of blend a little bit. And then while I'm at it, I can go ahead and I can paint in these, uh, these little petals here. And we're gonna paint around these two little lobes here. Those are gonna be yellow. And we're gonna paint this bottom part here. I wish I knew proper flower names. If anybody knows, they can drop them into the chat. <laughs> I'm sure you guys, somebody, somebody out there knows. Probably have a botanist out there. Now, this is where it gets kind of fun because you may think, oh, geez, I think I want that a little bit brighter. Oh, I forgot to, uh, another little shape in there. I forgot to draw. Those look like little, um, little parentheses. We're just gonna draw those in there with our brush. 
then if you want to intensify that color more, maybe you're like, ah, I think it needs a little more oomph. Go right in here. No, no, very little pressure here. The tip of our pencil is a little wet because we used our brush to pick up that color. So we want to be very gentle. We can actually go in there, color like we're coloring with regular pencils, except with no pressure. And we can give that like a, a second coat. Now, one thing I did want to mention um, about the different ink tents products is that the, um, the pencils are much more translucent, transparent. And the blocks are a little bit, um, a little bit more opaque. But I find the pan paints actually the white pan paint to be extremely opaque. It's almost like gouache, um, so it's wonderful. And you can get any of those colors by themselves. So if you're a watercolor artist that wants gouache on the go, but their gouache always falls out of their palette because whenever you put wet gouache in it, like dries and then cracks and falls out of your palette, you could pop one of those right into your your regular metal tin. It's, very, it's a standard size half pan. So um, I just wanted to recommend that to anybody that has that issue with their paint. All right, now we gotta let that dry because if I go in with some other colors right now, it's gonna just seep into there and, uh, and cause a mess. So while that's drying, we're gonna go in and paint these, these little stems. So we're gonna clean our, make sure our brush is nice and clean and get some fresh water. And we are gonna grab the Kiwi We're going to add a little turquoise to that. I'm a big fan of, of limited palette. You know, you don't have to be. You can use a totally different color. Use what you have uh, or use what you prefer. If you don't like this color very much, you don't have to use it. Like, for instance, let's say this color looks too red, too, um, it looks too bright. And you're just like, geez, that's a little too bright. I don't like it, Lindsay. It's not my cup of tea. Well, you know what? I've got this, uh, this leaf green here because I know I'm going to use that on some of my details. I can go pick that up with the corner of my brush and use that. And that's gonna mute it down. Another thing you can do is you can take an opposite. So remember how I said that our complementary colors, you put them next to each other, they look vibrant, but you mix them, they get dull. So if I wanna make that less bright, all I gotta do is pick up a little of that red and mix it in. Look how it makes it a little bit browner, okay? It's a great way to make a color more earthy if you feel like it looks a little too um, too bright. And we're just going to go ahead and paint in all of our stems and buds. And don't worry if you have a puddle on your paper and it gets and it kind of whooshes out. I think that looks really cool. Um, if you don't think it looks really cool, let your background dry completely. Like I can see, I got some puddles going that um, they're actually too far away for me to get the whoosh effect. But uh, but if it bothers you. Remember, watercolor's lazy. It's only gonna go, it's gonna go the easiest place possible, which is wet paper. So if you don't want it to do that, then let the paper dry. Lindsay, somebody asked if you were, um, if your reference was an actual orchid or if you were using an image. Oh, I have a, I'm actually using a reference photo. I can grab it and show you. Um, I could share a link to this, or if, I don't know if, if Felicia could find it, it might be hard to find. It's on Unsplash, and it is, um, I bet if you typed Orchid, you could find it, but Unsplash is a website that's got commercial use images that um, anyone can use, so that's where it's from, and I'll try to remember to, I could probably, um, when, the, when the replay's up on YouTube, I could probably just leave a comment with it in there, um, or you could search Orchid on Unsplash. But sadly, I have a green thumb, so any orchid I've ever owned has not survived. And you can add, you can, it's also fun to, um, to kind of uh, alter your mix here and there, like change it up a bit so you've got some areas that are a little bit bluer, some areas of stem that are a little bit yellower, some that are a little bit greener, just to give it a little variety because nature is full of variety. Oh, we're making good time too. I was a little worried that we would go, we'd be over, but I think we're doing good. The buds can be a little more on the yellow side too, because we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna do a technique with the pencils with that leaf green pencil, that uh, that will uh, that will add some shading and stuff. So having a little bit more yellow on those will be really nice. Hope you guys are having a good time. I'm having so much fun. 
So I'm going to do sun yellow plus the uh, the kiwi to get some nice bright. Oh, doesn't that just look like summer? Mm. I'm really curious to, as to how many of you guys are painting along because I think that would be really difficult to to uh, to chat with friends and to try to paint along live. Um, so if you're painting, uh, let us know in the chat. I'd be really curious. I keep really like I have it open on my screen, but I have to be careful because I get so nosy. I want to see what everyone's talking about, so I have to be really careful not to get distracted. Another thing I like about the intense pan set, which are, they're pretty new. Um, and I was really surprised because like, you know what? I got to be honest. So I'm a cheapskate. And when I first saw those come out, I had like, I had an extra set of, of 10 intense pans that I got before I got my full set. And I thought, well, I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to get a, get an old palette. I'm going to crush up the intense. I'm going to put it in a palette. I'm going to, I'm going to try that. And and to be honest, I didn't really like it that much. And I was thinking, oh, well, I guess these aren't for me. And then I got these a couple months ago and they're a lot different than the blocks. They, they were just so much more vibrant and transparent. And the fact that they were more light fast, they were just, I don't think I've really put them away since I got them. Um, but I thought it was so funny because I'm like, I, I got blocks, I don't need these. Um, it, it's just, it, the, the consistency of them is so, it's so similar to watercolor, but you have the, that staining um, ability that you you can keep layering and layering and layering without getting mud. So I thought I just, I thought that was kind of funny. And I thought I'd mention that in case any of you guys uh, use the blocks for paint and didn't like them. Um, since you can just buy a pan or two and see, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of neat. All right, now I'm going to take the leaf green, which looks so dark next to what we've already done. And I'm going to start sketching in some details. And what I'm doing is um, sketching on kind of like the, the splits between the petals here in the bud. So if you think of like a Chinese lantern, if you've ever seen those plants, they're orange and they, they almost look kind of like a, a teardrop shape. And you see these ribs that kind of come down, um, kind of like a pumpkin, but this is more of the shape of a Chinese lantern. Um, you just kind of sketch on those little, those little separations, those little ribs, and it gives a nice um, a form to your artwork. And I'm also kind of outlining a bit. Now my stem here is dried a bit, so I'm not getting a ton of, of pigment, but the nice thing about it is that I, it gives me a bit of a random effect because it's going to catch wet areas of the paper and leave a darker line, and it's going to catch dry areas of the paper and leave a lighter line, and it just, I think that variety of line, that variety of tone and color makes it look a lot more painterly. It makes it look a lot more interesting. Now, whenever you're uncomfortable with your paper, don't contort your arm so that you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Move the paper so that you can approach and pull your lines however it's most comfortable for you. And if we have any more questions, Molly, you can chime right in. We're just kind of doing this for a minute or two. I'm kind of reading through here. I think we've been answering a lot of it as we've been going. Oh, good. Has the chat been active? I've been like making myself not look so I don't get distracted. It has, and I'll send it to you at the very end, Lindsay. Oh, wow, cool. I know you could do that. Yeah. Now we're going to go in with um, our brush and our, our pencil. It's still the same leaf green. And we're just going to add some kind of wider strokes of color. Oops, I'm getting off camera. What I see on the camera is opposite. <laughs> so I see like my my right hand is on my left. So it's it's weird. This is a very earthy green. If you're using like say watercolor, um, like a traditional watercolor or watercolor pencil, you may be looking at like an olive or a moss green. So if you're not using the same product, I'd say just go, just kind of eyeball it. Nice big shadow on the bottom of that. And if you like different colors, especially after you've done this once with me, like you've painted this along, you could swap out colors. You could do, orchids come in so many pretty colors. You could totally, change it up to your favorite colors. 
All right, I want to give this a little bit, um, uh, some more vivid green. So I'm gonna go with my brush and my apple green. I have a question for you, Molly, because I noticed like the apple green is very similar to kiwi. Um, I didn't compare the light fast ratings on both of those, but is that a new color that you guys formulated to be more light fast for the pan paints, do you know, or? I am going to pull out the light fast ratings because I have them here. Oh, awesome. Because I noticed some colors were very similar. I was so excited to see mid ultramarine in this set because it's like one of my favorite light fast pencil colors. So you're talking about all on the pencils, right? So Lindsay. I got the pencil is apple green and I've got the uh, paint pan, which is kiwi and they look to be about the exact same color. Let me, give me just a minute. Sure. And I will report back here. I'm actually going to do a little spattering of this color because I feel like I want a little bit more of that in there. So you can spatter with your pencils. You just load it up with a real juicy brush. Oh, maybe some yellow too. So apple green has a um, blue, wool, blue wool scale rating of eight, which is the highest. Okay. So that's good. And then let me check on the paint. And I'm sorry, Lindsay, which I'll color was it? Because Actually, all the paint, eight. all the paint is an eight. So same thing. They're all eights in ink tents. That's funny. I wonder, that's so funny. I wonder why they have, they're so similar in color and they have different names. Because usually Derwin is very, their colors are distinct in, the, in a set. Um, well, obviously all those are distinct, all the pencils are distinct, but the colors look so familiar. I mean, so, yeah. uh, so similar. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I just did some spattering to just boost my color and uh, uh, energy a little bit up more in this. I think I'm gonna do a little more fuchsia too, because as things dry, you can see a little better what you are, uh, what you're going to get because anytime you add a lot of water I'm going to make some more purple I'm going to go with the fuchsia and the turquoise and I'm going to paint between the little red. And Lindsay? That's probably a bit big. Yes. This Felicia. So we're at that point where right. you're, you're kind of going in and your um, internet is kind of going in and out. So everything you just said, um, nobody caught it. <laughs> so if you can repeat oh. what you're mentioning. Sure, absolutely. Um, so in this area between the um, between these kind of little areas that look kind of like comma strokes, we're just painting purple. And we made that again by using our fuchsia and our turquoise pan paint. Or if you want to just color it in with one of your purple pencils, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush because I had that held so much water that I ended up just kind of washing out all that paint. So I'm just going to switch to a smaller uh, number one round. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing with this little V-shaped end of the petal right there too. And something else I wanna do, because I did go over this with a pencil um, after we painted it, remember we painted it red and then we went over and colored over it with a pencil to get a super vibrant color. I'm just going over with a damp brush, not real wet, just damp and making sure that I did lock down all that color because I'm gonna do a little bit of a white highlight on there. And if you have, uh, say if you just color with the pencils and you don't add water to them, and then you go in over with another color, it's gonna mix with what you put on top if it's wet. So I wanna make sure that that color is locked down so I don't end up making pink when I wanna do a little white highlight. making up a little bit more purple that's a little bit more um, dark, so less water. And a smaller brush so it doesn't hold so much water and I'm just gonna add in a, make it a little 
little darker on there, especially on the edges to give it some definition. And in here. And if you do see that you need a little definition here and there, you can go in with that small brush and that purple, and you can, uh, you can make those lines a little bit crisper. I want a little bit of a purple tint, but not much on this, this area here. So I'm just gonna drag in a little of that damp paint just to, just to tint it, but not to do too much to it. And then I'm gonna use sun yellow and you can use a pencil if you're more comfortable with using the pencil to color in these little lobes right there. Now, if you wanted more distinct lines, of, or veining on your flower, you can do that by simply using your small round brush. You could also use a liner. Liners are a little bit difficult to control and I'll show you a liner in just a second, just so you um, know what I'm talking about. But um, you can use a liner or a small round brush if you wanna make some of these lines a little bit darker. You can do that. Now this brush, actually this one is a, um, is a, just a small Da Vinci, it's actually a number two. I would probably still recommend a number one just so that you can get nice hairline lines. Um, the uh, the Zen All Media or the Menta All Media or Golden Taclon like this are a little stiffer, a little pointier. They don't get as soft if you don't have as much paint on it because uh, they're not as absorbent. So you could use those for doing these little lines if you want to. That's only if you want to increase that. If you don't, then then don't. It's it's completely up to you. I think maybe on these these three underlapping petals, I will. But um, you know that's completely up to you. If it looks too pale, if you just feel like it needs a little something, a little more definition, you can do that. So this is actually I'll finish this with a with this, and I'll show you a liner. A liner is the same thing as a small round brush. The only difference is it has long bristles, and the long bristles facilitate carrying more paint so you don't have to reload your brush very often. And I know I have some liners here, if I have any real skinny ones, but pretty much every brand of brushes make them. So if you look at this brush versus this regular round, I'll clean the extra paint off there, you can see the difference in the, oh, I just dropped my brush, there it is. Um, you can see the difference in the length of the bristles. Now I, the ferrules are lined up, the ferrules are the metal parts there, they're lined up, but look, the bristles on the liner are twice as long. This is actually a faux squirrel liner, so it is meant to be very absorbent. And actually what I'm gonna do is show you this on a, on a scrap of paper. So if I, and this isn't, I'm not gonna show you a watercolor paper, I'll just grab my, my template here. This is my template that you can download for free on the, uh, the Michaels website. So if I, use a liner brush, I can load my brush right up with all kinds of juicy paint, roll it right in there, and I can just make lines without reloading till the cows come home. Now the benefit obviously is I don't have to reload my brush. The downside is longer bristles are more difficult to control. So they're gonna kind of like bend and flop. So you wouldn't wanna be like painting the highlight in an eye, but you could do long cat whiskers for instance, but you wouldn't do the highlight in the eye with it. You know, you'd want more control. Whereas the shorter bristle brush, which has tried to hide on me again, I can load that up as much as I can. And it does a great job, but it's just not gonna go quite as far before I have to reload. So that's the difference between those two. I really like liners, especially for doing um, like landscapes, painting grasses, painting fur, anything, hair, anytime when you, you want a lot of, um, you want a lot of thin lines of color and you don't wanna be reloading your brush all the time. All right, I think now we could do some highlighting. So a good rule of thumb when you're gonna use this white intense pan is to actually add some water to it a couple minutes before you're ready to use it. So what I like to do is just get my brush sopping wet and just drop some 
water right in there. Just let it sit for a, for a minute or two. It reactivates really quickly. The white is a very thirsty color, which means you can keep adding water and it will keep taking more water. And then you'll get a really thick, almost um, ink-like paint. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. And I'm gonna see if there's anything else I want to do to this picture while I'm waiting. And I think there is, I think I'm actually gonna do maybe some dry pencil work here. Uh, I'm gonna go in with this, with this leaf green. Now, if I'm doing dry pencil work, I got to keep in mind, if I want to put a white highlight over this, it's going to activate that pencil. So instead of getting a bright white highlight anywhere, I've put some of this bright um, apple green color, I'll end up with like a pastel green, which it might be what you want. It might not be what you want. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're working. If you just want to have the color without, um, because these will be a little more opaque if you don't add water to them. So if you just want that punchy opaque color, use a pencil dry. But if you if you know you're going to go over it with, with a white or a lighter color and you don't want it to mix, then you can add some water to it. But I'm not, I'm not bothered if it mixes with some white. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these beautiful sun yellow and apple green here and there. And I think it'll be fun if I add the white on top. Now, I'm also thinking I might want a little bit more color towards the outside edges of these leaves. So I'm just going to go in with my dry pencil and pump up the color a bit. We're almost done, guys. I just pretty much have white highlights to add. But I love color and I love to show you different ways to enhance the color on your projects because I know it can be a little scary when you get towards the end and you're like, oh, I wish I painted that darker. I wish I did this or that. Um, so I want to show you those ways that you can, you can kind of push those colors. I can even take the, the, um, the fuchsia. Now you do have to be a little more careful with this, but it's very, very light strokes and you can just rouge on that color. It's, it's super, super light using the pencil at an angle. So I don't scratch the paper or compete with those lines I've already done. And I can go in and intensify that color. You could also do this with regular color pencils after your paper is completely dry. My paper is a little bit damp. Um, you know, you definitely could let it dry first. There. Now, when I'm going to be using the white paint, I actually prefer a golden Taclon brush. So if you are looking at like the um, Royal Magnical Menta range, um, they're all medium range is golden taquon their watercolor range is the faux squirrel so you would want to get one of the all media brushes or the zen all media brushes both of those are available at michael's they're about i think around three to six dollars on the size of the brush very affordable uh, they're just more I want that for the white here and I'm going to start on our on our petals and I'm just going to add some highlights and you don't have to do this this is optional if you're happy with how that I think it kind of makes a background a bit and it's pretty and you can also go over your pencil lines at this stage if you don't like the look of graphite on then you can go ahead and do that and give you a little highlight up there The more water you add to the white ink tents, this is the antique white, um, the more translucent it will be. And I'm gonna do a little, I'm actually gonna wipe some of that off of there. I got a little too much paint. I'm just gonna do a little bit of highlight on there. Now, if I highlight an area where I've got any un, unreactivated paint, like I mentioned before, it's going to mix and I and it will mix with whatever color and you'll get like, kind of like a pastel. And Which Lynch, we will do you know, on just top. A piece, of, a, a piece of the information that you may have provided just a moment ago, um, they didn't catch it uh, only because your, your, your internet kind of went in and out again. Oh, shoot, okay. Um, was I talking about the opacity of the white intents? It may have been. It was right before you applied the white paint. Oh, okay. I was probably talking about the brushes and I prefer to use a golden Taclon bristle brush for the white ink tent because I want it a little thicker versus using a 
faux squirrel, like a Princeton Neptune or like the, um, the Menta watercolor brushes. So I want a little bit stiffer of a brush so it can hold the, um, it can hold my stroke a little bit better and it doesn't absorb so much water. Generally, I like to have a watercolor brush that holds a lot of water, but this is like using gouache, which is, you know, a little bit thicker. And I want that more intense, bright white. Now, over here, we've got some areas where I have some colors that I never activated. So I might get some mixing, like I'm getting almost like a pastel tone in there. I think that's really pretty. But if you don't want your whites to mix with any of the colors underneath, you just gotta make sure that you activate them by adding water to them and letting them dry. So it's just something to, something to think about. And I'm not sure how much cut out. So I did wanna just mention that you can get any of these pans individually if you don't wanna get a whole set. Um, I'm definitely gonna get more of the whites just to be able to throw in my travel tin because it's such a wonderful highlight color and I don't have to bring a tube of gouache or try to squeeze it in my palette and then you know have it get cracked and fall out because gouache does that for some reason. Okay, and I think this is just about gonna do it. One final thing I like to do is actually add some white splashes. I do have to use a softer, more absorbent brush for that because I just won't be able to spatter with a stiff uh, golden tacklon brush. So I'm gonna make myself a little puddle of white and it looks kind of like, um, it's about the consistency of whole milk, maybe half and half coffee creamer type consistency. And I'm gonna flick that on. Any place you have any boring bands or boring patches of color, flick on the white paint. It, it just adds a little magic. It's like adding glitter, it's really nice. And um, if you guys have any final questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. And if anybody painted along and wants to share their work, um, hold, it up to the, hold it up to the screen and we'll see. We'll see uh, what you, how far you guys have gotten because that was a lot to do in an hour. I'm so proud of you guys. I don't know if Felicia can see everybody from her end. I can only see a few people at a time on mine. Oh, and I'll mention this too. If, if, uh, if this is the first time you've ever seen me teach a class, I have a YouTube channel called The Frugal Crafter, also a blog, and I have thousands of painting and crafting and card making tutorials. Oh, Jane is sharing a painting. Oh, that looks fantastic. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Roberta, Tanya, Pamela, these are great. Felicia, can you show all these at once on the screen? And make them make them like a like a gallery or something so I can see everybody's at once. I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure if everyone would be able to see my gallery, but I will try to go through and um, highlight some. Oh, wonderful! That would be great. Oh, these look so good, Michelle. That looks awesome. I'm just scrolling through the. I can see a little mini a mini thing. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks great. I love the robust burgundies in that one. Oh, that looks so nice. Oh, wonderful. That looks so good. Oh, wonder. I love that big orchid on that one. Great. I can't seem to see it. Oh, that was Amy's. I can't always see the names. Oh, nice, Inus. That is so pretty. It's so delicate. Oh, you guys are doing so good. I love that background. That is awesome, Barb. That looks so good. And I'm seeing some little, oh, look at that. Kim, that looks great. I love that earthy tones. I've seen orchids that look like that. All right, wow, you guys have done so well. I'm scrolling through the little pictures because man, they just look so good. Well, please guys, would you do me a favor and, um, and tag me because I would love to see all of your artwork. And um, if you guys have, um, I think it, tagging on Instagram works really well. If you have Instagram, if you share a picture and tag it, I would love to see. I'm gonna be uh, keeping my eyes peeled because um, you guys did awesome. I don't know how, like, because painting this for the first time and watching and following along, that is, that's amazing to do that live. 
the replay will be available at michaels.com slash classes in about 24 to 48 hours or on the Michaels YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to Michaels already, you're going to see it in your subscription feed tomorrow or the next day. Um, and the pause button is a wonderful thing. There's also, if you're watching it on YouTube, there's a little gear button you can click and you can slow me down um, if I'm going too fast or speed me up if I'm going too slow, which is, uh, which is nice because you can kind of paint along on your own terms. Um, Susan says my hair is back to blonde. Yes, it's summer. It's summer. The pumpkin spice hair will come back in, uh, in October or so once my tan fades. I, I haven't really got my tan back yet, but I'm trying. I'm trying on these good days. Uh, all right. Molly, did we have any questions that I missed? I don't think so. Lots of compliments, Lindsay, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. I want to thank Felicia for running the show back at Michael's and making everything so smooth and Molly for moderating the chat and answering questions. And most importantly, I wanna thank you guys for spending part of your day with me and painting along. That means so much that you would take some time out of your day and hang out with me. I had a great time and um, I hope we can do it again soon. Thank you so much for painting with me today. And we'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.